Hello, Mentor Monday, 920, no, it's 930, the last day of September. I'm looking at three portfolios today. Going to start with Natasha. Let's see. So this is really nice drawing, super cute. Um, You've got this guy watering his garden and some chickens are going by. Okay, I and they got out of the cage. He's freaking out a little bit. Trips over, and the chickens are like, hey, dude. Okay, a couple of pointers. Let me start off with here. I'm going to pause this and take a screen grab of here. All right, you have this shot here, no chickens. Okay, so in this drawing, it doesn't have a very clear focal point. I mean... We are, we see the guy and that's, that's fairly clear, but you have this no chicken sign, you have these gates and stuff. So let's improve your composition a little bit. Let's turn the, the opacity down. Let's put the, the chicken, the gates this way. Okay. And this is going to lead our eye to the guy who's watering. You could also consider putting your no chicken sign over here. And if we started off on this and then panned over, you know, pulling out a little, then panned over to see the guy here. Then we'd see no chickens, then a guy. That way we'd, we'd set up the fact that he's got a garden. He doesn't want any chickens in. Um, I would say also, though, that these, these bushes here are really um, kind of distracting. You're kind of getting away. I would, I would pull some of those back a little bit. Um See how that already helps. And that's even without like putting these gates here. And also things in the foreground make them darker. That helps give a sense of space. Things in the background lighter. And you could even, let's see, you could even design your background a little bit more to draw our eye to the guy. Already this is helping. And we could, you know, put some bushes here. Yeah, that keeps our eyes from going off this direction. All right, so then the chickens go by. That was cute. It's like, what? And we see the gate is, oh, no, the, um, then we go back. The, the chicken, I think the gate is open, no? Or just that there's no chickens in there. So if it's the fact that there's just no chickens in there, you could do, like, put the gate here. Not with that thick of a line, but... Show that the gate's open and the chickens got out. It's like, oh no, the chickens are out. He trips. This um, this was, I like this. Nice job here. One thing I'd suggest though, um, because it does get a little bit distracting. At least to me, is to just, you know, don't have things shining through like here. Let's just put that carrot there. There's the guy. He's on the ground. He doesn't have a carrot through his arm. And if that was supposed to be the carrot in the foreground, I would just get rid of it altogether just because it gets, there's so many lines there. He's he's on the ground. And this is fun. I like the, the shot of the upshot of the, where are we? Upshot of the chickens. That was cool. It's like, no, don't get me. Um, I did get a little confused here. Like, um, this shot, the chickens walk away and he moves his arms. It's a POV. He looks and all he sees is lettuce. Because that's from the ground. I wasn't sure. And then he looks up and sees carrots. This is a cool shot. Chases the chickens. One of them stops to peck on something. Hey, hey, get out of here. Puts them back in. All right. <laughs> nice job. Um, I think the thing you want to focus on here is every storyboard drawing should have a focal point, like the thing that leads to what you want the eye to see. For example, if you look at this thumbnail here, this shell is pointing to my face and this lamp is also sort of leaning over. Not the best um, 
layout. Of course, I'm just, just a Zoom camera. But in your story drawings, you can control all those things, and you should do that. Okay, next is Evan. Evan sent a spooky board with ghosts and murder or something in it. It was a long board, Evan. Good job on that. Uh, let's take a look. Looks like there was a kid who was sick, popping up blood, right? And now thieves. Is this, is this a ghost is dragging somebody? Or the wind is blowing these? I wasn't sure. Anyways, murder scene happening. Um, all right, this here. This is cool. I like what you're doing. Let me show you something. All right, you have the super moody shots. Kind of cool. Um, I did get a little bit I bumped a little bit on this the staging here with the the um the branches. So, but you did a cool thing with the guy here. Let me get that darker color. We've got this guy here and this other guy. And the, nice, okay, so nice um staging here. And you have this tree. So let's make this tree bigger. And the, and the trees are, there we go. Um, I want to erase this guy here. So at least in the drawing I did. So you have the tree branches all pointing at the guy on the ground, which is cool. Um, I would just leave a little space around it. But here, like if we look at your drawing, there's not a lot of space or there's no space around the guy. So design the branches so you leave a little bit of airspace here and that will help lead the eye to that spot. Okay, so he murders a dude, and I don't know that you really need this stab in the hand thing. I don't know that it's super adding to anything. He's already on the ground. He comes up, and he, like, puts his hand over his face, and he's going to stab him. And then we've got this woman over here. Okay, the shovel here is in the way. I would take that shovel out. It doesn't help. Like, here, you have her with the shovel. Nice, nice drawing, but the shovel's right in front of her face, so... If we take that shovel and put it over here, let's see, right here maybe. And here's the tree, and she's right here like, oh my gosh, I'm watching this dude get murdered, and let's have the tree just fill the frame. So she's she's pushed all the way over here, because her hair. Don't have the shovel in front of her face. Okay, um, back to the board. And he murders the dude. Stab blood everywhere. Okay, what is she doing with the shovel? Is she going to come bury him? I don't know. Um, all right, so then we got the servants coming up. And now it's an old lady, I think, the mom. It's set in mom in the dialogue anyway. She's talking to them, hey, I want to know, is my son here? They're like, oh, he's a loser. This is a cool shot. I like this. Nice, nice drawing. Go away. They whip her hand. And give Okay. The lock is featured here. I wonder if instead of this this very um having this plane that put the plane of the gate cutting across the frame, if you, you shot that one more in like this sort of a thing where you have here's the lock and the, the chain and all and here's the gate. Okay, here's the chain. Move out a little bit. All right, so here's the thing and then you've got the mother's hands here you know she's like holding onto the thing let me in and she's you know putting her hand in have you seen my son that sort of a thing i know this is very flat but it might be a little clear as to, that the gate is locked it's not unclear it's just that the staging is such that i'm looking right at this lock more than i am at her hands and you've got all this stuff going on but the lock is such a thing like hey it's locked get out of here I just wonder if it was here, and maybe actually even now that I'm looking at this again, put the lock a little bit down, and then you have the hands and stuff happening here. I don't know, suggested. Might work, might not. Um, okay, so, all right, this was cool. Got the guy sitting on the bench, and he gets up with the blood. We know, ooh, it's a spooky ghost. He fades away. Uh, you know what? I wonder. No, nah, I'm just gonna leave that one. Nice drawing, super nice drawing. Did a good job of okay. This bit here with the castle, and they talk about the kid. There's a kid in the window, and then we see it's a ghost. Oh my gosh, scary ghost banging on the window. Nobody can hear. And reveals is this the the guy that's murdering people? He's got the cloak on. 
and they're locked up. This is spider webs, I'm thinking. Locked in this room. Can't pick up this doll. The guy shows up. He's got the lock. And he's got, where is it? thought I saw yellow eyes. Well, whatever. Um, there was a chain down. Okay, so here's where, I don't know what the rules are. If you're a ghost, you can pick things up, but you can't. But one ghost can, another ghost can't. Not really sure, but, you know, all right, I'm going to go with it. That was creepy and cool at the same time. Like the hole in him. Here comes the police. The ladies. I don't really know what the ladies are doing in the house. They came to get something, and then they hear a noise, and the police show up. Like, what's he going to do? Kill the kid? But the kid's already a ghost. Steps on the doll. I was just unclear, like, what he was after. He's trying to protect the women downstairs. And why is the guy who's been murdered trying to kill somebody else? I didn't know. I couldn't I couldn't figure that out. Um, cool drawing, so. Police are going to find my body. He's got blood all over him. He's freshly murdered. Uh, this is a nice transition. They open the door. They come inside. And one of them's a bomb. They're like laying down on the couch. The other one's going to go do our work. Um, the dude's upstairs. Looking. They see a shovel with blood on it. Close the door. Police show up. Okay, so the story doesn't have an end. You kind of leave it at a cliffhanger. I'm guessing that was something you want to do. In my personal opinion, when you are have a story portfolio, you want to have an end to your story because as a storyboard artist, you need to show other people that you can tell a story and not just like, oh, look at this cool setup. Ha ha, I don't have to finish it. No, finish the story. And this one is kind of a long one, but mm, I recommend that you finish the story. Or make it shorter and then finish it. Show what's going to happen. Have a resolve in here. But good job. Your drawings are awesome. A little bit of staging things here and there, but not bad overall. Looking good. Okay, next is Soul Mets. Hey, Soul. Another spooky board. Nice fitting for Halloween. It's about to start in a month. Um, let's take a look. Okay, so you have this guy here, and there's all this line work that's that's kind of attracting my eye over this. At the very least, just like bring down the opacity a bit. Or you could, another thing is you could just take the dude and move him over or something. Put him, put him here. Whoops. Um, grab that again. Put him a bit off screen. You know, he's back here. Then we don't see his face. And we're focused on this guy. Like, hey, this, the, this is the job. Like this. It's going to put us on the map. It's going to be awesome. We're the new Ghostbuster. They're talking. He's he's angsty. His delicate heart. He just had a breakup. And the dude's like, oh, don't worry about it, bro. Look at the breakup that went on here. Okay. Um, this is just a personal thing. I don't particularly like writing instruction in a picture like out and doing the thread and stuff. I, I don't do it. But some productions want it, so whatever. That's fine. Um because obviously you see that the thing went off frame and then went off frame and now there's a little note there. Okay, opens the door, there's a bat. It's a cool transition. He comes in, he puts the stuff down. Do, 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 do. We see all the stuff, another broken heart. This guy's getting ready. There's a dude in the background slumping on the couch, which was cool. He pulls out the witching rods. This is fun. And now we got this guy, his camera move where he's sitting on the couch, not helping, purposely not helping. And he's sad about his whole life. This guy's setting up the Ouija board. Um, this is cool. I wonder though, all right, on this shot here, let's have a lower camera angle and put, put candles up here, here. There's the Ouija board. Which you probably really shouldn't mess with Ouija boards in real life because why invite evil spirits? Okay. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. Now put the dude here on a slight upshot. And here's your, your ceiling. Okay. It's whoops. Out of it. All right. Now you've got some dramatic, uh, a dramatic shot with his Ouija board, and he's going to call this ghost from the past. Um, now I know that you did it this way because you you were you were 
looking down and then going up and then you pull out and you have this thing happen. So, okay, so this is cool. But if you started from this shot, already dramatic, and now you went up and here's the ghost up here. Ah, I will get you. It's a terrible version of your ghost. Your ghost was cool. There's the stuff and this lady pops up and she's the vampire. Okay, uh, a lot of confusion going on with the bats and stuff. Like bring the opacity down on those lines or make her lines thicker. And she screams and he's like, aha, you're here. And she throws something at him again and again. That was cool. I like that. Uh, I would take the air out from here. Okay, like we just, I like the drawing. It's a nice drawing, but let's focus on it a bit more. Like say if you took this out, you have this really nice profile here. Do that and then put the hair over here. And that frames her face a little bit. You could, even if you wanted to, add a little bit of white to her eye, which will help make that pop. Minor note, though. Good drawing. And she's like, all right, spook buster. That's what it was, spook buster. Let's see what you can do. Ah, and then bass fly. This guy gets up. Oh, no, I'm so sad. How could you? And he's back there fighting the ghost and not helping his friend. That was cool. And this this is this is a nice angle of this thing. She looks over and sees the dude. Oh, who are you? And they're having an argument who's who's sadder. That was so cool. Love that. And this is great. Um and off they go to talk about their sadness, <laughs> which is cool. And then bats. All right. Hey, nice, nice job. So I love this. Um just pay attention to some of your staging and your really nice drawings. And also, um, your construction lines sometimes get in the way of the drawing. Just go back and erase some of those. It makes the drawing a little bit clearer. But overall, awesome, dude. Okay, last on this round is Uzo. Um, I took a look at your board. Let's let's go to the website. Nice drawings, nice compositions. Uh, my biggest note would be these are just like beat boards. They don't really show your range as a board artist. So if this, if you're using this to get a job as a storyboard artist, they're not really showing your range. It's just showing that you could do some nice drawings. Um, let's take a few of these and and show you what you could do with them. All right, so this is good. You have a clear um, focus of your drawing. These two guys, you could strengthen that a little bit more by. Um, Take this and really, you know, let's let's um put the car here. And now it's it's more perspective pointing at the guy right there. Okay. And we probably want to just put a little bit of airspace here. And I can bring that past it down. So that makes these guys pop a little bit. And I would even like bang out those trees right there. And this one here, make it a little bit taller. So now we have those lines that point to the guy. Okay. Um, good drawing. Okay. Uh, next, let's see. Same thing on all these, all right? See, so nice drawings, but they're just beat boards. They're not really showing what you can do as a board artist. Just like you could put closer to camera here. Boom, the thing blows up. They come in, there's somebody dead. Everybody's dead. And there's the cause of the death is this person here. That's cool. Wait. Oh, she's facing backwards and then she turns to them. I'm going to kill you too. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, this one was cool. You have like the, the toothy elephant. That, that was awesome. Comes out of the ground. Um. Okay, so the start of it is here. He sees a dead elephant. Its eye is opening and then ah, it comes up out of the ground. Um, okay, let's let me show you a couple things you can do on this drawing. It's pretty dramatic and pretty cool. I want to show you just how to add a little bit more depth to this, which you do have quite a bit of depth. So this hand here, right? Now, let's put the sphere here. Okay, there we go. This is um, shield over here. That's cool. And now this tusk, let's make it bigger. 
this one off screen. I'd get rid of this blade of grass here, and here you have the the, the elephant mouth. It's gonna bite the guy. He's starting to get up. So we're replacing this thing here with the leg. And this is the front leg, like he's starting to stand up. So, well, okay, we need to draw in there because I didn't fully render mine. But here's here's our dude. Now see how we, we've got this trunk, this tusk, this ear, all leading to our focal point, which is the guy. Now he's got a spear pointing back at the elephant and his shield also leading to the elephant's mouth. And the elephant is leaning towards him. He's leaning this way. It's conflict. Um, that could make that drawing a little stronger. Nice drawing, though. Okay, um, let's see what else. So, oh, this one. It's the dude at the pool. Uh-oh. There's the pool with the lady. And now there's murder. What happened? A jealous boyfriend, maybe. I don't know. Um, nice drawings. Nice drawings. But, okay. What I want to tell you is do a story rather than a few beats. Like, do an actual story and show people how your grasp on how to tell a story. I think that would help a lot. But very good drawings, anyways. Like, that's it for Mentor Monday. See you guys.